Hello, my name is uh, Kennedy Mkuka from the Central Bank of Zambia and a scholar with the IFC Milken Institute Capital Markets Program. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Betty Wilkinson, who is joining us today to share insights on the COVID-19 crisis in Africa. Betty is a Chief Executive Officer of our financial sector deepening Zambia, based in Osaka. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. And I am also the chair of the FSD network of nine FSDs across Africa. Uh, so probably to kick things off, uh, you can describe the work that uh, FSDZ uh, does and the activities you're currently undertaking and how COVID-19 has impacted your work pre and uh, during the pandemic. FSD Zambia is what some people would call a think and do tank. So our approach to development of financial markets is to look at how does finance affect the real sector? How does services and abilities affect the real sector? And in, in turn, what is it, what's happening with clients? Many of our partners, the government's basically slowed down to a standstill because they're working so hard to try to keep the country afloat. So uh, working with the government has been difficult because they have other, much more important things to do. Uh, working with the private sector has been difficult because many of them are trying to stay alive in this very difficult economic environment. And then with the NGOs, what's happening is that their main sources of regular resources, um, they're running into problems financing. So their finance is, is being cut, it's being extended. In our case, in that both of those things have happened. We've seen some funds cut until, until future years. We've seen some things that have been expanded. Fortunately for us too, some of our partners are saying, well, we do, we have some money for COVID. What are you doing? We are doing a lot of information sharing on COVID issues, particularly with the chiefs, traditional chiefs in Zambia, particularly in Luapula province. We went there, we videoed them. They decided that they wanted to talk not only about health protection, but also about digital finance because they view that as a way of becoming more safe. The second thing that we did was we looked at savings groups. We have 800,000 Zambians, mostly women, who are meeting and saving money and interlending and also using this for, as an opportunity for self-insurance. And these Zambians are used to meeting together on a regular basis and sitting next to each other very close and handling a lot of cash. So we sat down with them and said, what are the things that under COVID you shouldn't do? How can you adapt your programs and change them and make them still successful? Another thing that we have done in the area of how do we take something we want to have done and then move it forward is Zambia now has about 90% of the country covered by cell phone towers because there's been a lot of recent installations. But the surveys done by the regulators show that there's only 51, 52% of the population, adult population, that has a cell phone. So there are a lot of people who, if they had cell phones, they could get information about COVID. They could learn financial options they have to stay alive and keep their tiny microenterprises alive. And they can also then start accessing digital finance. So um, with participation from CEDA and from DFID, we are going to distribute 44,000 cell phones to poor women across uh, four of the poorest provinces in, in Zambia. Then they can have access to these services. We had hoped that would happen anyway. COVID helps us drive it faster. Thank you. Uh, looking at the uh, focus groups that you're working with, these are uh, women, micro businesses, and uh, agribusiness. Mm -hmm. uh, how has the pandemic affected these groups in terms of their sustainability, their access to capital? What we see is we see heavy compression on the ability of households to borrow, and we also see significant difficulties in earning incomes and investing in their futures. We're very worried about what will happen when the schools open because there are a lot of families who have eaten that money and how are they going to pay their school fees? The Central Bank of Zambia has uh, uh, tried to put in a program. This is the targeted medium-term refinancing facility of about uh, 10 billion to boost uh, liquidity. Uh, do you think uh, this is enough uh, to uh, revamp the economy and help the microfinance institution? And does it have a trickle-down effect to the 
the focus groups that you are working with? That's a really important question. I think that the Bank of Zambia was very intelligent in setting this up. It was difficult under the economic circumstances of the country. Uh, I think that the banks have taken this on and they have been very clearly told, do not refinance cheaper your existing clients who don't need the money. Mm -hmm. You need to be looking at businesses that we need to survive in Zambia and then continue once the COVID uh, circumstances lighten. And so the challenge is really, how do you get to those institutions where the risk is higher? And still accept that this is the arrangements you're gonna make, you're gonna lend at a cheaper amount, you're gonna give them a longer period for repayment. Um, so these kinds of things are difficult. I think that the bank, central bank is talking about how do we reach down market to the microfinance institutions? Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, do we even consider any kind of support for credit unions or other types of institutions that are financial in nature? I also think that they have been saying, how can we reach the informal sector, which is significant across Africa and also in Zambia? How can they reach them? It's an important question. They're still thinking hard what to do. What areas do you foresee as priority to develop the financial sector in the future? This is interesting because we have just shifted and evolved from just looking at financial services to looking at financial services in the context of growth and development in the country. So for example, we're working with the, with the government and with, the, with uh, one of the MNOs to develop digital school fee payments across the country. Digitization generally, the work that's being done with the farmer input support program, almost a million farmers are getting support for their crops um, in terms of inputs. Now we are providing insurance so that if it doesn't, if it rains too much or if there's a drought, they actually get some money paid out from a claim on insurance. Interesting. Uh, before we close, Betty, is there anything else you'd like to add? I would. That, that fortunate, with Zambia and other countries in South Africa, Southern Africa, have been reasonably fortunate with COVID, and we are so hopeful that we won't end up with a terrible, terrible situation. And so, so encouraged that in our world, that there is an opportunity to recover and to grow later. So we remain optimists. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Milken Institute and I. Thank you again for this uh, insight. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm.